Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is our King. We give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for another privilege and a glorious opportunity we have to share with you a living word from God. And yes, we do have a word for you today. Would you please grab your Bibles? Welcome to Healing School. If this is your first time viewing this broadcast, my name is Dr. Garen Gatling. I'm a servant of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, a minister of his glorious gospel. And I thank Christ Jesus, my Lord, who has counted me faithful and put me in the ministry, not according to my own works, but according to his own purpose and grace. I give him all the praise, honor and glory for it. We've been teaching on and preaching on and ministering on the subject of divine healing and health. We began this the middle of last year under this under the topic of healing from a kingdom perspective. We want to know. What does God think about healing? How does he view it? How does he see it? What's his mental outlook when it comes to the subject of divine healing and health? That's how we started. All of last year we talked about it. All of this year we've been talking about it. And right now we're talking about partaking of the heavenly call. You remember last week we talked about hearkening unto the heavenly call of divine healing and health. And we define the word hearkening as listening with the intent to do. Just listen. God is saying, when, when, when I talk to you, I need you to come on purpose. Listen to what I have to say and, and be intent on doing what I said. Take what God has to say very, very seriously. It's very, very serious. And then today we're going to talk about how to partake of that heavenly call. And today I'll give you some, some specific steps you can take. Jesus provided for you and me at the cross of Calvary through, through his redemptive plan, healing for our physical bodies. It is God's will to heal sick bodies today. Most of us know that Jesus wants us saved as we know it. In other words, he, we know he wants us born again. Jesus is not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. He's not willing that anybody should die. He wants all men to come to a knowledge of the truth. He wants you saved. He loves you. See, that's why he gave his life for you. But what most people don't know is that while Jesus was on the cross that day, he also took your infirmities and bore your diseases. See, he bore it all. Galatians 3.13 is the best scripture I know to capture all that Jesus has accomplished at the cross of Calvary. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That's what the Bible says. And it says he did it by becoming a curse for us. And when you go read the curse of the law, and one day we'll do that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at verse 15, and you read through that. And you hear about all kinds of sickness and disease. The Bible says Jesus purchased your freedom from that with his precious blood. When he was on the cross, he did that. Galatians 3.13. Powerful, powerful thing. And so if Jesus paid the price for me to be well, then baby, I want it. See, it, whatever he died for me to have, I want it. The word redeem means to purchase back. See, folks, a price was paid. The precious blood of Jesus was shed. So that means there are some things out there that belong to me by inheritance, by my faith in Jesus. Can you see that? Belongs to me. And it's up to me and you, for that matter, to go to the holy written word of God, go into this new covenant that's been ratified in the blood of Jesus. See, that's what it is, a new testament. See, it's a covenant. Go in there and find out what he left in the will and then begin to appropriate that. See, it doesn't happen automatically. It has to be appropriated. That's why we say how to partake of that heavenly call. How do I partake of that? What's my part? How do I do it? Why? Because I want my stuff. <laughs> right? Have you ever been to a will reading? I've never been to one, but I've seen one on, I believe it was YouTube. People are just sitting there. This is listen, boy. Why? Wow, they're waiting to see what's what's mine. Praise God. What's mine? And how do I get it? Where do I have to sign? Where do I need to go and pick it up? Right. That's of course you are. This is a will. So when you come hearkening, you come with the intent to hear what belongs to me and how do I get it? And I'm going to put this thing to practice. No wonder the Apostle James says, blessed. No, let's just read that. Go to James chapter one. 
Let me show you this. We quote it all the time. Let's just go ahead and read it. Um, look at verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. See, he said, put it into practice. Not just hearers. Don't just hear words, but listen with the intent to do what it says. See, let me put it another way. God's saying, would you listen to me very carefully as you can go get your stuff? I'm going to show you exactly how to get your stuff is what he's telling you. See, can you see that? Say this with me. The Lord is my primary care physician. We talk about this all the time. You should say this every day. Say this with me. The Lord is my health care provider. I love saying that, particularly in this day and age. If you live in the United States of America, you know that you need some health care and you need somebody who's not going to be sitting there debating on whether you need to have it or not. <laughs> you know, you need, to, you need to talk to Jesus. So make him your health care provider. And lastly, the Lord's word is my medicine. I gave you Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 last week. Please write those down. Don't let them get away from you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this Bible lesson today. As we come to humble ourselves before the healer himself, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. How you anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power and how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for you were with him. And your word says in Hebrew 13 and 8 that he's the same yesterday, today and forever. You said you're the Lord and you change not. You said that it's impossible for you to lie. And so we believe that. And we humble ourselves before the authority of your word. We expect the blessed Holy Spirit, whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide, to unveil, unfold, and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits. Jesus, when you walked the earth, you said, unto you it's given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And so we come to receive revelation about divine healing and health. Lord, especially when it comes to our individual situations, they're all different. Might be one heart problem here and a heart murmur there and stroke there and diabetes here. It might be just all kinds. We need an individual word today. Speak to our heart. And as we receive your word, we're expecting your word to cause our bodies to amend. We're expecting the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead to quicken and make our physical bodies alive, to drive out sickness and disease. For you're the same God with the same glory. And we release our faith and we grab hold of it in Jesus name. Amen. Let me tell you a quick testimony before we get into the word. I was studying, and I'll give you these principles so I have time today. You might want to write this down. Write this down. Precious blood. Write that down. Then write this down. Precious promises. And then write this down. Precious faith. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself, but that's how you partake of the promises of God. You always go to God based upon the precious blood of Jesus. Never go to God based on your works. That's the fastest way to close up heaven. Talk about how good goody two shoes you are. Never just go to God and plead the blood, plead the blood of Jesus. Praise God. You'll get all of heaven's attention when you talk about the blood. Demons will tremble, see, because they know you're about to get some answers when you start talking about the precious blood of Jesus. And then begin to appropriate, watch this, the precious promises of God. That's 2 Peter chapter 1. Remember the exceeding great and precious promises? They're very, very precious. God's promises are valuable. Praise God forevermore. You ever see those commercials like, go get some silver, go get this. You know, this is precious, it's valuable. God is saying, you better go get my precious promises while you're at it. See, these are very, very precious. And then in order to partake of all that, you have to release your precious faith. Did you get that? Precious blood, precious promises, precious faith. That's how you do it. Here's my testimony. I was walking this is two days ago at work. I'm, yeah, a day and a half, two days ago. You know, I do a lot of working and walking, so on and so on. And I was walking, and my, my right pelvis, or whatever this was, hip, 
it felt like it was going to give up. I, uh, I was like, oh my God, what's that? I didn't know what it was. Oh, oh what in the world's that? And I kind of worked through the day with it. And at the same time, I got home and uh, I, you know, I released my faith. I know I, I sat right on the edge of my bed and I did what I'm telling you. It wasn't no long, drawn out prayer. I said, Lord, I come to you through the. Now, you can use this, by the way, for any sickness and disease you're dealing with. Lord, I come to you through the precious blood of Christ. Now, when I say that, listen to me. Matter of fact, go to 2 Peter. I might as well slow down and show it to you. Looks like we won't be going to our regular lesson today. <laughs> All right, 2 Peter. I'm going to show you this from the word. Okay, I'll just teach you if it's from the word. All right, let's start at the very first verse. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To them, now listen carefully, that have obtained. He didn't say you were going to get anything. This is what we miss it. We always want to push things off to the future or talk about the past. The Bible says, watch this. Now faith is not yesterday, not tomorrow. Right now faith is and say faith was and say faith was going to be. He said faith is praise God when right now. In fact, Hold your place and flip over to Hebrews 11. I'm going to teach you this today, okay? Because it worked for me and it'll work for you. All right, Hebrews 11. Now look at, look at Hebrews 11. One. Let's quote it together. Most of us can do it anyway. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right? We all know that. Now I want you to look at it and just read the first three words. Ready? Let's read them together. Now Faith is. Is means present tense. Not yesterday, not tomorrow, not going to be. Right now. Now, read that backwards, the first three words. It's going to ask you a question. Is faith now? Now, you go ahead and answer that. Based off verse 1, is that true or not? The answer is, well, yes, it is. It says so. It is now. Very good. Now, read it from the middle Back to the front. Ready? Faith is now. Can you hear God talking to you? Are you getting any revelation already? <laughs> God. God's telling you, faith is now. <laughs> and you're like, you're asking God, uh, Lord, um, is faith now? God said, now faith is. Faith is now. It doesn't matter how you mix those three words up. It always puts faith in the present tense. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Isn't that powerful? So God's letting you know right off the break. Baby, this is right now. Stop talking about tomorrow. Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. See, you need to focus on what's happening now. The Bible says, I am that I am. God didn't say I'm going to be anything. I am. I exist. Always have been. Always will be. I am. Watch this. The Lord, your physician. Not going to be. I am. See, did you get that revelation? All right. Go back to 2 Peter. Oh, boy, this is good. All right, look at verse 1 again. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have already, when we talk about faith is now, obtained. Now, what did I get already? That's what I want to know. I'm excited. Now, what's mine? This is what he said. Like Precious faith. There it goes. That beautiful phrase. You ought to write that down. It's a precious faith. Why is it so precious? But it gets things done. I mean, faith will heal your body. Faith will save your soul. You could be on your way to hell. I'm talking about one foot on a banana peel and what one foot in hell itself. And faith in Jesus can turn your eternal destiny around. Glory to God. Baby, that's precious. Praise God forevermore. Your daughter, just like Jairus' daughter, can have, could have died. And precious faith will raise her up. <laughs> Praise God. That's precious stuff. The woman with the issue of blood. She suffered 12 years. Many physicians suffered, the Bible says. Spent everything she had. Watch this. The precious money couldn't help her. Watch this. But that precious faith kicked in, didn't it? Jesus said, daughter, your faith made you whole. What faith? The precious faith. <laughs> That's good stuff. 
Now, notice what Peter said. He said, you've obtained that. You have it. Yeah, you. When? Now. Remember? Now faith is. That's your stuff. So he said, you obtain this like precious faith. Watch this. With us. In other words, Peter saying, I didn't get one kind of faith and you got another one. God didn't give the apostle Paul this kind and Paulus that one and James that kind. And he gave you another kind of faith. There's only one kind, the God kind of faith. See, and the Bible says you've obtained. Now, the word like is a simile. You ever know what a simile is. The word like the word like or adds a simile. See, you're making a comparison to God is saying you got the same kind as I got. That's what Peter's telling. You got the same faith I got. See, and notice how you got it through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how I got it. I didn't work for it. I'm saved by grace through faith. Now, listen to the rest of that verse and that not of yourself. God's saying not just the grace you didn't have anything to do with. You had absolutely nothing to do with the salvation. Even the faith that you have, you had nothing to do with it. It's the gift of God. I gave you that. I'm excited. That's my stuff. I've obtained a like precious faith. Now listen when he goes on to say, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him. Now that goes back to the prayer I was praying. We need to have knowledge of him. You remember when I prayed, Lord, I come to you through the precious blood of Christ. Remember how I started out praying? See, when I'm talking to God, God knows and I know, and so does the enemy, that I have a knowledge of him. I know about Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, who his own self bear my sins. He took my sickness and my disease. Surely he bore it. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. See, I have knowledge of him. He was pierced in his side. The blood came streaming down. See, they pierced him in his hand. I have knowledge of that. See, and the Bible says grace and peace are multiplied to me. Why? Because I know something. See, grace or God's willingness to use his power, his authority and all of his resources in my behalf even though I don't deserve it, is multiplied. The more the knowledge and information that I get, the more I know God is saying, well, I'll do even more for you if I can get you to get some information. See, he said it's through the knowledge of him, our God and of Jesus, our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. I said this last week. That pertain to life and godliness. Does healing pertain to life? The answer is yes. Let's say it another way. Does health care have anything to do with your life? Yes. See? And God said, I've given you all things. In other words, I have a health care plan for you. I have a way to get you well. See? Now that belongs to you. That's what the Bible says. Read it for yourself. Okay? He's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him. Notice he said it again. Why does God keep talking about knowledge? Think about Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So when you don't know, the enemy can steal from you. God says, but when they know something, I'll begin to multiply stuff. See, I can get stuff to them now because they know. So go back to what I said. Father, I re release the precious blood of Christ. That's how I come to him. With the knowledge of him, I know something, right? I begin to appropriate your precious promises. Remember I said that? Let's look at that. Look at verse 4. <laughs> Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and what? Precious promises. See, so I go to God based on the precious blood of Christ. I'm standing on your precious promises. And then I begin to quote the promises. Now, in this particular situation, remember I told you my, my pelvis or hip, well, I don't know what happened. I just was walking. Oh, God. I know, it's like it just gave out on me. And so I released the precious promises of God. And these are the two I use. 1 Peter 2.24 and Mark 11. Let me quote those to you while I get my computer going again. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the cross 
that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, ordinarily, I would admonish you to go find the promises of God, read on them, meditate on them, get them strong in your spirit before you start praying. But I already had these scriptures down in my spirit. I've been meditating on for, remember, all of last year and all of this year. So they're pretty much in there. So I didn't have to go run to it. But I admonish you, before you pray, go get those scriptures, meditate on them, memorize them, get them down in your consciousness. So when you release your precious faith, you can lay hold of the hope that's set before you. Can you see that? And so I said, Lord, I release my, watch this, precious faith. Hold your spot. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter. We have a few minutes. I'm going to teach you how to do this. Uh, 1 Peter. Look at verse uh, 7. Actually, let's go ahead and go to verse 6. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Let's apply this to sickness and disease. You're hurting through that real temptation or that trial and test with that sickness and disease. Boy, it's heavy. I know it's hurting the Apostle Peter saying, listen to what he said, that the trial of your faith, here we go, being much more precious than gold. I have a question for you. What's more precious than gold, according to that verse? Your faith, right? That's what it said. The trial of your faith is much more precious than gold. That's what the Bible says. So this is a precious faith. See, I said, Lord, your word says himself took my infirmities and bare my diseases and with his stripes I'm healed. And then I, I added Mark eleven twenty four. 24. You might want to write that verse down. And you said, whatsoever things I desire when I pray to believe that I receive them and I have them. I desire to be healed. I have this pain in my side. And this is what I said. I said, Lord, while I'm at it, now watch it. I was working out at the gym and I think I, I don't know what I did, kind of tore my rotator cuff and it was hurting for days. And I never did anything about it. I didn't pray about it. I just was, ah, I didn't even worry about it. And I also had this pain in my knee and I didn't even pray about that. It's just, ah, I just letting it go, just put up with the pain. But while I was praying, it dawned on me. I said, oh, and while I'm at it, <laughs> I said, I'll receive healing from my, my rotator cuff and my knee. And then I said, I release my precious faith. And I thank you that those things are mine. I begin to worship and praise you for it. It's mine now. And I thank the Lord and I left. Listen to me carefully. Nothing changed right away. You might want to write this down. A lot of times when you're releasing your own faith, in other words, there's no special manifestation of the Holy Ghost, like some man or woman of God, anointed of God, laying hands on you and speaking the word of faith or what. I, none of that. When you're releasing faith in your own, a lot of times there's no instant manifestation. That's why it's called faith. It's the substance of things hoped for. See, I hope for that. See, I expect that to come to pass. But God expects me to believe that I have it now. Watch this. When I pray. That's why Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you received it. He didn't say when you got up and walked down the street, think that you have it. No. While you're praying, believe you received it. It's mine. I have it. And you begin to praise and worship him for it. This morning, <laughs> I woke up. The pain was gone out of my uh, side. Gone. Right. I expected it to. But while I was taking a shower on my way over here. Uh, was it over? My, yeah. Yeah, on my way over. No, this morning. Pardon me. It was on this morning when I prayed. I was in the shower quoting my scriptures. And I noticed when I was showering that there was no pain in my arm. And it was hurting. It almost, I was like, oh. I said, oh, I said, yeah, I prayed about it. I said, Lord, thank you. I forgot I prayed about that. And the, oh, yeah, there's no pain in my knee. I said, oh, that's right. Thank you. See, can you see that? And I, I, told, I said, honey, you, this is what happened. I, I forgot that I actually prayed for the rotator cup too. And it's healed. See, how did I do it? I partook of the divine call to divine healing of health through the precious blood of Christ. I grabbed hold of the exceeding great and Precious promise of God. How? I released my precious faith. You ought to talk to God like that. Lord, I come to you through the precious blood of Christ. I have your exceeding great promise on it. And by the way, this will work for anything. Just go find the promise. Meditate on it. Get it down in your consciousness. Don't just, don't just play games with it. Make sure you know what you're talking about when you go to God. And then make sure your faith, make sure your faith is strong when you release it. If you're not there yet, don't pray about it yet. 
if it's not life or death, just wait and wait till your faith is strong. See, faith cometh by hearing and hearing. If faith hasn't come yet, don't pray about it yet. <laughs> wait till faith comes. And then when faith comes, that's when you release it. Did you get that? All right. Uh, there's probably no need for me to go any further, but let's go read uh, Hebrews 3 and 1 right quick. Since this was the scripture we had last week, uh, more than likely going to have to come back again in a week or two and go back over this. Hebrews 3 and 1, let's go ahead and close this up. The Bible says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly call. Now, if you've been listening to last week's broadcast and the weeks before, you know exactly what I mean about that heavenly call. How God calls those things that be not as though they were. How he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. How he called us unto glory and virtue. How he called and said, by my stripes, you're healed. It's a heavenly call. Praise God. He said he called us to glory and virtue. Partake of the heavenly call. And then he tells you how to do it. Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, the anointed Jesus. All right, let me give you some homework and we'll come back next week. Thank you for joining Healing School. Write this down. One, two, three, four. Number one, consider Jesus. Write that down. We'll give you some homework. I want you to go uh, throughout this week. Take the time and pray and go find out what the and consider Jesus. Go find some stuff out about him when it comes to divine healing and health. I want you to go do some homework. Go find out about Jesus. Consider him. Number two, call those things which be not as though they were. I want you to take this week to talk like that. Be very, very careful what comes out of your mouth and, and expect everything you say to come to pass. Practice that all week long. It'll change how you talk to your wife. <laughs> It'll change how you talk about your boss. It'll change how you talk about the president or anybody because you have to think. Well, I better not say that because I'm, I'm believing God that every word I say comes to pass. I can't say that. See, it'll change how you talk. Number three, continue in the word. John 8, 31. Write that down. We almost have a few, few seconds. And lastly, this is consider your ways. That's in Haggai chapter one. Now you take, write those down. That'll be your homework. We'll come back next week and we'll go all that. When I say consider your ways, watch how you've been treating people. Consider your love walk. Consider, are you forgiving people? Consider, am I tithing and supporting the work of God? Consider your ways. Thank you for tuning in to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast. I'm Dr. Garen Gatling. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. Until then, you remember, if you're not living a life of love, you're simply not living yet. I'll see you next week. Amen.